My very special guest today is Louise Hay, who has been dubbed the closest thing to a living saint by the Australian media. Considered one of the founders of the self-help movement, she is the author of more than two dozen books, including the international mega bestseller, You Can Heal Your Life, which has sold more than 35 million copies around the world. The New York Times calls her one of the best-selling authors in history. Thanks to Louise's healing techniques and positive philosophy, millions have learned how to create more of what they want in their lives, including healing and well-being in their bodies, minds, and spirits. She is the founder and chairman of Hay House, a successful publishing company that began in the living room of her home before turning into a worldwide publishing company with offices in the UK, Australia, India, and South Africa. Hay House authors include Wayne Dyer, Dr. Christiane Northrup, Susie Orman, Dr. Brian Weiss, Doreen Virtue, and many other notables in the self-help movement. An active philanthropist, her nonprofit organization is the Hay Foundation, which supports those dealing with AIDS, battered women, and other challenged individuals in our society. Although she is now officially retired, we saw her on Oprah last year, and now I am thrilled to say that she is here with us today. Well, welcome. It is such a pleasure and honor to be interviewing you. Thank you. So you say that if we change our thinking, we can change our lives. Oh, we do. We do, constantly, <laughs> all the time. You think a negative thought, you're going to go on a downward spiral. You think a positive thought, you'll attract wonderful things to you. Absolutely. Well, so can you share with us a little bit more about your beliefs and ideas and thoughts about ourselves and the cause of our physical and emotional problems? Well, I have come to realize it boils down to choosing the thoughts you think and choosing the foods you eat. And when you can be wise in both areas, you have perfect health because the body knows how to take care of itself, but not if you give it a lot of junk right. and not if you give yourself a lot of junk thoughts. So it's, it's a clearing, it's clearing the weeds from the area, from the mind and from the soil. and. Uh, well, I couldn't agree with you more. I've been, <laughs> no, I've been, I've been following your work for years and years. And so, but for those of the people that have tried to change their thinking but seem to be stuck, and can you give them some advice to help them to be more positive or to get through Well, those I don't places? think that they've been trying and they're stuck. I think they just haven't tried. Because if you will practice this, even a small amount, it makes a difference. I have a simple exercise I give everybody, and some people say, oh, that's so stupid, it's so <laughs> silly. But I ask them to look in the mirror, especially first thing in the morning, and just look in their eyes and say their name and say, I love you. I really, really love you. And this is enormously hard for most people to do to begin with. But as you continue to do it, it makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. You see, life loves you. Life really loves you. But if you don't love yourself, it's very hard for life to bring you the goodies because you've got this wall up. Mm -hmm. So when you can learn to love who you are, and that's the way you were born, when you were a little tiny baby, and when I say you, I mean everybody <laughs> listening to this, uh, we all adored ourselves. We loved our bodies. We loved every part of ourselves. And then we started to listen to other people who told us we weren't good enough or we didn't do it right or no, no, no. Mm -hmm. And so we decided that maybe we weren't very good. And that's where we get all mixed up. But when we can get back to that point of just adoring this marvelous critter in here, mm -hmm. uh, then life says, oh, they've, she's got it, she's got it, let's give her goodies. Mm -hmm. And then the next step is to be very grateful about it. Yes. When you're really grateful, then they want to give you more. Excellent. Oh, that's wonderful. So 30 years ago, you were diagnosed with cancer, and you oh, recovered. Yes. So yes, will you yes. share that story with us? Well, it's... It, 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 what I realized at the time was that I had already been studying this stuff, the metaphysics mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the thoughts, etc. And when that happened, I realized that life was giving me a chance to prove to myself that what I was teaching worked. So I said, okay, you better get in there, girl, and do it. <laughs> <laughs> and but I did. did. <laughs> yes, I not only changed thoughts, but I think one of the things that was the most helpful, really, uh, was the forgiveness. Mm -hmm. I really got in there and dug out as much as I could find out about my parents' childhood. Mm -hmm. And when you understand somebody's childhood, then you can understand how they went from being this wonderful little baby to the people who would mistreat a ch another child. 
And that sort of gives you a point to begin your forgiveness work. And when I started to do that, I think that was the big shift in inside. Yeah. But then, of course, I also did, uh, I found a wonderful naturopathic doctor. Yes. And there's an, a very interesting story goes with that because this is over 30 years ago. And last week I had a letter from him. And he, we have not communicated in all this time. This is the naturopath? Yes. I had a, a, a letter from him. And he wanted me to do his second book. Oh, wow. And I thought, wow, isn't this interesting? Because here's a man who literally contributed over 30 years ago to healing my life. Yeah. And now I get to do something for him. That's so, so beautiful. So we said, you know. <laughs> it comes full circle, yes, right? Yes, full yes. circle. So That's I'm going to do whatever I can for him. So we had the manuscript come, and, you know, we've gone over it, and we really like it. And uh, it's, it's wonderful. That's beautiful. And, and, you know, you can't make this stuff up. No, you can't. <laughs> when life has an opportunity it wants to present to you, it's there. Well, it's interesting. My ex-husband had cancer, and we mm -hmm. did the, we did very similar things. It was the food, it was the lifestyle, it was looking mm -hmm. at yourself in the mirror, looking at the history and where mm -hmm. you come from. Mm -hmm. So I remember beating story. a lot of pillows. Yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. There you go. So Hay House South Africa gives one hundred percent of its profits back to the people of South Africa. Yes, to the Noah, to the Noah Group. Okay. Yes, and which it's is specifically for, to the eighty thousand, eight hundred thousand. Um, children orphaned from the AIDS em epidemic. Yes, yes, we can't do them all. I mean, that's a yeah. lot of people, but no. we take whatever profits we have and we give it to one of the NOAA groups right. there. The well, what drew you to this cause? Why, why South well, I've Africa? I've been working why? with AIDS since day one. I know, you have yeah. a power, you know, you had a power. I didn't ask for it, but life said, here, you handle this <laughs> yeah, one. Right. In, a, in a time when nobody knew anything, nobody people knew were what. scared. Oh, they were terrified. They wouldn't touch each other. They were, yeah. oh, it was so silly. I wouldn't get into that, but uh, I knew I would never get it. I knew right. that, uh, and I just treated people as people. But uh, so I've been with AIDS since day one, and uh, you know all AIDS things sort of touch my heart. Oh, that's so beautiful. Yes, you know I have a small foundation, and uh, I call it heart money because mm -hmm. uh, when I hear of something that touches my heart, then I give what I can for treatment. So, since we're here at the Spiritual Cinema Circle, we have to ask you about movies. When did you first fall in love with movies? Oh, well, <laughs> this is interesting because I grew up in the Shirley Temple era mm -hmm. when everybody went, all the kids at school went to see Shirley Temple whenever right. it came out, and they'd all come and they'd talk, but I never went to a movie, never went to one movie in my entire childhood, with one exception. I had a very bad toothache one day, and it must have been really bad for them to take me to a dentist and spend money. Uh, <laughs> and they pulled my tooth, and I was so frightened that I fainted. And I remember waking up, and I was having my face slapped by my stepfather, not the dentist. <laughs> and then... Yeah, that tells and, us a lot about your history. <laughs> and then he took me to a, a movie, and it was The Bride of Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. Wow. So wow. I, that is really strong in my consciousness yeah. for a long time. It's the only movie I saw till I grew up. The really? only one. I never got to see a Shirley Temple movie. Oh I got to God. see The Bride of Frankenstein. <laughs> yeah. I don't blame you for being a little bit <laughs> not, so, not so interested in going, but you must have some favorite all-time movie. Oh, I mean, there well, must be something the, the, that Oh, Harold and Maude is probably really? my favorite all-time movie. And inspired movie. and touched but you. But a lot of it. Yeah? I've seen it, you know, 40 times. Really? Yes. Yeah. What, what inspires you about that movie? Well, it's just a charming movie. It's mm -hmm. very, very charming, and it's funny, and it's goofy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of movies that I've liked uh, over the time. <laughs> but, you know, I've just made a movie two years ago, and it was my first movie. And uh, what I was thinking at the time, it's so interesting because most women in their 30s or 40s in the movie industry, you know, are, don't, can't get a part because they're too old. And here I was, <laughs> I 80 <laughs> years old, making my first movie there and being go. the star in it and yeah. getting to do my own dialogue. And I, I thought, know. wow, this is really great. I saw and, your movie, by yeah. the way, and it's wonderful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's very wonderful. Yes. So if you were to recommend to people or to young people what movies they should watch, if there was a... Would you movies recommend? That, I would say movies that inspire them. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Things that inspire you to feel good and feel things that give you a warm feeling in your heart. Exactly. Yes. Can you give us any positive message that you would want to get out there to our Teach to our people viewership? to love themselves. Yeah. 
teach people to release the guilt. I think it's one of the biggest things I've done in my work is help people release guilt because we all yes. walk around with this huge pot of guilt that we carry. One of the things that I think about uh, the work that I do and the work our company does is that every product that we sell or that probably that you get as a gift from us uh, has the possibility to change the quality of your life, to improve the quality of your life. Now, whether you actually take that opportunity or not is up to you. That's exactly. freedom. Exactly. But you have everything we give out can help people really improve the quality so of their lives. And it's that true. feels good. Well, thank you for that. You're welcome. You've inspired a lot of people to change their lives and to love themselves.